I want to take our next question tonight, and it comes from someone that we met <coughs> in the first week of the show this year. That was back when the bushfires were still raging, and Graham Friedman joined us uh, as we broadcast live uh, from the outskirts of the nation's capital. Uh, you lost your home in Cabago over the summer. Before we get to your question, how are you doing? How are you coping? Uh, it's pretty tough because it's very physical and it's a lot, huge amount of work to do, um, trying to you know, rebuild and to Still get out of the ground. <laughs> um, and we're kind of just getting out of the ground, but only just. You've held it together? Um, I think, I think uh, um, because we haven't... COVID's been a, a nonsense. We haven't seen COVID because we've just been so busy doing everything else and we're so isolated. So um, we haven't really experienced that with the rest of the world. But we have been desperately um, trying to get life sorted out, and it's been really tough. Um, but it's, um, I, you know, I think we're gradually getting there, but we've got a long, long, long way to go. Long, what, long. What's your question tonight? Uh, well, unfortunately, for the third time on Q and A, um, this uh, just to point out that the overwhelming emotion um, that we have, I think, on the Cabago Firegrounds for the people out there um, is now, uh, and has been pretty much right through, um, abandonment, right? Um, we've, um, you know, the governments, um, big G governments have triaged us out uh, as the fire approached. Um, then our lives are scraped up um, and dumped into convenient cleanup. Very, very convenient, but uh, uh, very slow and tedious and took a lot of time. Um, charities, insurance companies, and that have been using us as marketing, mm. uh, and that is terrible, right? It's been shocking, right? It might, really does hurt us. Um, the councils and planners um, think that just waiving fees is sufficient to fix us up and to, to help us through. Um, there's a lot more that has to be done. Um, there's been a lot of soft programs from government and uh, for charities and things like that, um, but they do more to help the providers than the punters. Um, the punters really, people down on the ground, really haven't seen, and the people who, like us, that have lost their homes, um, haven't really gained anything out, much out of that. Um, we're really broken, our bodies are broken. I've got some, you know, I'm gonna have to have a, lot of, a number of surgeries to fix what's happened over that time, and other people are just as bad. Um, we're not alone. Um, and we've yet to see the grass fires this summer in February, we're going to have grass fires, and we've got no water for RFS trucks on the fire ground, right? We literally, because there's no roofs, there's no water, because we can't collect it. So um, think people, the planning isn't being done for that and many other things that are going to affect us. Um, and I guess we've been politically and practically abandoned um, in the area and right through the fire grounds, but I think particularly we feel it down south because we never had any support. Um, and so I think the, the simplest form of my question is, when the F-U-C-K is big G government going to coordinate, and I mean coordinate, truly practical H-E-L-P, right, on the ground, in the fire grounds? Let me put that to you, Christy. Thanks. Um, and thanks, Graeme and Robin, for your question. Um, it's a really difficult issue and I think it's something that Australians and governments don't understand, is that recovery is not a quick fix. It's not, here's a building contract and a builder, replace your home. There is state planning systems that have to be dealt with, there's DAs that have to be lodged, there are sometimes um, cultural heritage studies that, that have to be done. Sometimes your neighbours are state forests and national parks and you have to deal with them to get access or to create an asset protection zone. Um, when I talk to people right across the Eden Monero electorate, it is the constant theme. And I spoke to someone last week who told me they felt abandoned. And again, that word comes up today. Uh, I was in the Snowy Valleys two weeks ago and the same word keeps coming up. And whilst, yes, there has been money spent uh, for you know, people and business and industries. What I'm being told on the ground is it's not effective enough and we're not seeing a difference made. People are feeling abandoned because this bushfire season that we've seen was horrific. And we all suffered through an episode of it, whether it was large like yours or smaller like other people's. But the conversation so quickly moved on to COVID that that feeling of abandonment has never left. And then 
when we have a bushfire royal commission, you know, there's been 240 other inquiries or commissions with a whole bunch of recommendations. There was a collective eye roll when the Royal Commission was announced, but we had one and the recommendations were handed down and then all of a sudden we were talking about a US election. And I can understand why members of communities that I serve feel abandoned because we're still not talking about the major issues they're having. We need a complete rewrite of bushfire planning. We need to make it simple and easy for people to help themselves to get out of this situation. We actually need programs that are targeted directly at the people that have lost the most. We need to understand what the ongoing implication is for business and industry. We need proper research dollars put into understanding how this is going to impact our health long term. None of that is being done and I'm constantly accused of playing cheap politics over bushfires. This is the reason I do it, because your story is replicated not only in Eden Monero, but right across the country. So if we're serious about recovery, then we have to be serious about being there for the long haul. But Graham, what, you, what conditions are you living in right now? You're not back in a home, are you? No, we're, we're in the caravan. Um, and you've been there all year? We've been there, oh, well, since we could get back in, right? Yeah. Um, because you had to get back in because you had to secure the place. You had no fences, you had no nothing. So you had to get back in somehow, and the caravan's one way. Um, uh, but being there. I, I just want to turn back to Christy, because $2.1 billion has been allocated under the National Bushfire Recovery Fund. I mean, isn't this exactly why you went into federal politics, to sort of help people out like this? Why can't you, Why are they still doing that while well, living in a, in a caravan? And th this is part of the, the reason that I think we need to continue to talk about it. There is no quick, simple fix. We've been calling for an extension to the Home Builder Scheme for months now because we knew people impacted by bushfire wouldn't be able to sign a bu building contract by the end of the year. There is $200 million a year in a disaster mitigation and recovery fund, part of a $4 billion fund. None of that has been spent in the last two years on any mitigation efforts. You know, I, I hazard a guess if you had have come down to an area like Cabago and made sure that the highways were cleared, so if we were impacted by bushfire again, we wouldn't be cut off from the highway, people would have been happy. But there is so much that is still yet to be done. So there is no tooting the horn and saying, great, we've thrown out all this money, job done. This is going to need sustained effort for some time. And many of the communities we're talking about, it's not just one episode of disaster. It's been an ongoing drought, it's been bushfires, it's been floods, it's been COVID-19, it's been border closures. So the cumulative impact of disasters on small towns and villages, on industries where you rely on jobs in those uh, regions, you know, we need to make sure that we're there for the long term for those regions hit hardest. Jimmy, it strikes me that when this all happened as a nation, we told these communities they were going to have everything they need. We're going to throw everything at it. Well, you know, as 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 you know, the, the people in this in this country and all from all over the world all wanted to help and all put put money out and wanted to. But unfortunately, the, it seems to be uh, politically uh, 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 the people who are working for us, you know, tend to try and they patch they do patch up work whenever they can when it when it's you know when when they want to get votes. I mean, I, I remember seeing seeing you know. Scott Morrison trying to force his hand into that guy's hand to shake hands, and it made me embarrassed to be Australian that these were our leaders. They should, you know, we have to stop thinking about how do we quickly, put, you know, put band-aids on problems and start dealing with problems from the ground up. I mean, at, at the royal commissions, we have so many royal commissions who are just completely ignored. We spend a fortune on them, then ignore them. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we have to start looking at, you know, you know the water, the, the drought problem we had with water. The bushfire, I mean, I, I, the closest the bushfire came to us was about 12 kilometres, and it was absolutely frightening. I can't imagine what these guys have been through. And, and you know, and just to have government sort of, like, trying, hopefully, like, sweep that out of the way. Now, here's another problem we've got. Let's mm. deal with this. They, they have to really start working from the ground up. It's, it's, this is a, one thing I think about COVID and, and this horrible year that we've had in a lot of ways is that we should look at not, not sort of like how we're going to get over it. Let's rebuild it and build it properly. Let's start from the ground up, you know? I'm, I'm just sick of hearing the same old problems coming back and back again.